Hey guys, it's Carson Miller Tech here, back with another video, and in this video... I'm going to be checking out the brand new DJI Mavic Air 2. About a month and a half ago, I uploaded my initial Mavic Air 2 impressions video, and in that video, I left something down in the corner. I hope to get my hands on this because this drone is just... Oh, man. It's the dream right now. Following the upload of that video, I got reached out to directly by DJI asking me if I wanted to check out the Mavic Air 2. And I was like, heck yes, of course I would love to check it out. So in this video, what I'm gonna be doing is checking out the brand new Mavic Air 2. I'm gonna be starting off with an unboxing, then I'll be getting into some setup and my first flight, as well as some impressions and then a review. So if you wanna see more content in regards to the Mavic Air 2, I'm gonna be uploading a ton in the next couple of months. So if you wanna see that, Make sure to hit the subscribe button down below as well as liking this video if you enjoy it. But if you don't want to do that now, that's totally fine. But in the meantime, let's get right into the unboxing. Before cracking open the box, taking a look on the outside here on the front, you do get a picture of the Mavic Air 2 in classic DJI fashion. On the back, you get some information about what's included inside the box, but I'm going to be opening this up right now, so what's the point of looking at that? Everything else on the outside, there is not much else, so let's get to opening this up. This is a bit of an Apple-esque experience. Look at this. This is like opening up an iPhone box. Here up on top, you do get the drone itself. And I do have to say, seeing this for the first time in person, this is quite a bit larger than I had anticipated because the prior Mavic Air series drone was quite a bit smaller. And after flying around the Mavic Mini for the last couple of months, this is quite a bit larger. But taking a look at it, this is the size of the drone. Here is my hand, that is the size. Here on the bottom, you see the sensors. So something cool about this is it does have quite a bit of sensors. It's got downward facing sensors, it's got these backwards facing sensors, and then forward facing sensors. So if you've been flying around the Mavic Mini, this one has a lot more on it, and that's pretty cool. Battery is pretty decently small, considering this is the longest flight time DJI drone that is available for this consumer level. And specifically, this claims to have a 34 minute flight time. So between two batteries, you can get an hour's flight time out of this, which is pretty insane. So I'm gonna set this aside just for now and take a look at what else is inside the box. Lifting up this flap, underneath you will see the brand new DJI controller. I am actually a huge fan of this controller. I've heard a lot of people say that they don't like the new controller design, but having this held in my hands right now, I do have to say, feels pretty sturdy. Like this is some solid plastic. It feels quite strong. If you're looking at this and wondering, where do I put my phone? Do you even use your phone anymore? Yes, you do. All you gotta do is pull this top part out right here and it is spring loaded. So this will fit larger phones and as you can see, it can pull out a decent amount. Surprisingly, below here is where the cable is. You pull it out on this side, wrap it on out, and it is just about long enough to plug into probably any long device that you have. So you just plug it into the side and you're all set. And something awesome about this Mavic Air 2 is that finally DJI has went and moved from micro USB to USB-C. There's USB-C here on the bottom of the controller as well as where the cable for your phone plugs into, which is amazing. As far as everything else goes on the remote controller, there's just your typical power on, power off button, your return to home button. You've got some buttons here on the back, which I'll talk about later. And yeah, there isn't too much else here. I like that it does have the removable joysticks as well. So that makes for if you're throwing this in a bag, you don't have to worry about the joysticks going and breaking off. Right next to the controller, you have a quick start guide as well as some warranty and safety things. And then right below that is where you will get to the accessories. You have your charger, which goes along with this cable right here. You just plug it in and you have your charger for your battery. There is a USB here, which means that you can plug your USB-C charger, which is for your remote controller, here into just this one charging brick. And all you gotta do is plug into one outlet and you can charge both your battery as well as the remote controller. Also over here in this side, you've got the additional adapters for your phone. Whether you have a micro USB or a USB-C on the bottom of your phone, you're all set. It does come standard with a lightning cable, so if you've got an iPhone, 
your set there. And also in here, you've got more joysticks. And then finally, in this accessories box, you have got additional propellers. So here you have it. Here is what the Mavic Air 2 looks like with propellers on. And if you wanted to see it next to something else, here is the Mavic Mini. And as you can see, when I put them on top of each other, the Mavic Mini width and the Mavic Air 2 width is actually very similar. However, the length is quite a bit longer as I would say that this is closer to the Mavic Pro original than it is to the Mavic Air or the Mavic Mini. And of course, it's not gonna be super close to the Mavic Mini. The Mavic Mini is the smallest DJI drone that they have right now. But as you can see, this is the Mavic Air 2 and I'm really excited to go and get this up and flying. So I'm gonna rip off all these stickers. As you can see, looking at this up close, it does have the Mavic Mini style of gimbal. However, this is a much larger sensor at a half inch sensor and it can do things such as 48 megapixel pictures, it can do 8K hyperlapses, and of course, in the video quality, it can shoot 4K 60 frames per second, which is phenomenal, as well as shooting 1080p at 240 frames per second. So if you're somebody who loves slow-mo, this is the drone for you. So there you have it, as far as the Mavic Air 2 unboxing goes, let's get outside and start flying this. So let's get right into getting this up into the air. And of course, before doing so, you will have to get the drone all prepared. So first of all, you're gonna wanna remove the gimbal guard, of course, folding out these wings, it is very nice. This is made of some very nice plastic, which the Mavic Mini was not made of as high quality plastic. So having a solid drone like this Mavic Air 2 is fantastic. Just snap your phone in, don't have to worry about it hitting the volume buttons. Plug it on in, power on your remote controller, same thing with the drone, and then boom, once you've got everything powered on, you are all set to take off. This new controller is a little bit different than other Mavic series. Of course, it is a little bit larger, and I've seen a ton of people complain about this design. However, I kind of actually like it more because if I didn't want to take off my case, which in this case, I did take it off, but if you don't wanna take off your phone case all the time, this controller won't interfere with your case and you should be able to keep your case on. The biggest complaint with this controller though is that I wish really badly that they would have put on some spots to put a lanyard on this controller. It's a completely missed opportunity. But aside from that, I love pretty much everything with this controller. It's got an adequate amount of buttons. It's got this function button, which is reprogrammable. It's got a return to home button and you can control the flight modes directly on the controller itself. Power button, of course. It's got a camera flip button. So that actually flips between your photo and video modes. You've got your gimbal adjustment here on the back and then your shutter button. So that is all that's here on this remote controller. Like I said, I will be diving deeper into this in a future video. But with that being said, let's get into taking off. I gotta say, this thing is pretty zippy. The camera is pretty dang amazing. Looking at the specifics that you can get out of this camera, of course, it does have the 48 megapixel sensor that I spoke about earlier, which means you get a ton of detail. And with that, that allows for 4K recording up to 60 frames per second, as well as in 2.7K and 1080p, of course. Um, it does have slow motion. So if you're somebody who loves slow motion, you've now got it in a drone, which I haven't really found too many scenarios where I personally can use that very much. But I know a ton of people, maybe cliff jumpers or cliff divers, stuff like that. That would be a great use for full slow-mo. And slow-mo can go up to 240 frames per second in 1080p, which is more than a ton of cameras can do. Like my camera right here can't even do 120 frames per second, which is just phenomenal that you can get this out of that sensor. And although it is a half inch sensor, it still can pull in a lot of details. Specifically in hyperlapse mode, you can get what are 8K hyperlapses. And that's just simply because it uses that 48 megapixel sensor to its full extent. And it just compiles a bunch of those 48 megapixel images together to form a 8K video. And although 8K video is pretty hyped up and you hear that and you're like, whoa, you can get 8K video in the Mavic Air 2, it's not exactly the same thing as recording full 8K video. And while I go over to this foresty area, talking about speed for a second, in sports mode, this can get up to 68 kilometers per hour, which is about 42 and a half miles per hour, which, wow. If I go in sports mode, you will see just how fast it can go. 
It's pretty crazy having a drone that can go this fast. I have had the Pro Platinum, but it is just nice having such a small drone like this that can go that fast. As far as taking photos go, by default, it is not in the 48 megapixel setting. So if you wanna change that, you just change it as you would anything else by going to photo, clicking on 48 megapixels, and then you can take a photo. If you'd like to see a comparison between a 48 megapixel photo and just a standard 12 megapixel photo, I will switch back to single, snap a shot, and you will be able to see between the first one and the second one, especially when I zoom in, how much more quality that 48 megapixel photo is. And it's a lot larger in file size as well, so if you're going around and snapping a ton of these photos, then definitely keep that in mind. But if this is for a commercial use and you're using it for, say, real estate, you may want to have that additional 48 megapixel photos as that will just let you stand out from competitors that don't have that high resolution of photos. As far as range goes, this has OcuSync 2.0, which OcuSync 2.0 is gonna give you up to 10 kilometers of range, which is about 6.2 miles. And that's just insane to think about. You're not gonna be flying that far away, but having that additional range means that you can fly maybe with a building between you in a city, whereas you could not if you didn't have that. And so this new form of OcuSync doesn't mean that you should just go and fly your drone six miles away, because you definitely should not do that, but it definitely improves your nearby signal because it does have that performance at 1080p 30 frames per second. So as you can see on the screen, I've got pretty fantastic performance as far as the video goes. Um, it's definitely not as clear as if I was recording a 1080p directly onto the drone's SD card, but it is still pretty phenomenal in comparison to say what the Phantom 3 standard did back in the day. The quality was just absolutely absurd and not good whatsoever. After flying this around for a bit, I do have to say that the quality of the video is just completely unmatched compared to other drones that I've ever flown before. Even though the sensor is a half inch sensor, the quality that pulls out of it is just insane. And I'm not just saying that because I want to say that, but it really does pull out some amazing quality out of this camera. And something that I haven't mentioned yet in regards to the video is that you can go and enable D-Cine-like color on the camera. So if you're somebody who likes to go and mess around with color grading and that's something you enjoy, then with this, you will have that ability to do that because the Mavic Air 2 does allow for decent like recording in color. The settings that this thing has is pretty numerous and I love how much flexibility they give you here. Well, as I was talking about earlier, as far as the button customization goes, by default, this comes with a tap of turning on and off the auxiliary LED, which is an LED that is on the bottom of the drone. So if you're in an area with low light and you're wanting to land, then if you have that set to auto in settings, then it will go and automatically turn on that. But if you wanna turn it on manually, you can just press the button and it will turn on the auxiliary light. Double tapping will recenter the gimbal, as you can see, moving up and down. These are only programmable at this current moment to change between three things, and that is recentering the gimbal, auxiliary LED, and toggling between map slash live view. I wish that DJI would add a couple more options as far as what you can do with this button customization, but because they update firmware all the time, I can certainly see them adding more features in the future. And specifically, these are some things on the screen that I'd like to see that you could do with these button customizations. Because this drone does have so many obstacle avoidance sensors on it, it doesn't have any on top or on the sides, but it still will be able to go and avoid obstacles for you. If you enable this A-pass setting right here, it isn't enabled by default, but if you turn it on, it will fully avoid obstacles for you. And let me bring it back home so I can show you that in action. So if you've got A-pass enabled and you've got a scenario where you've got a tree like I do behind me here, you may not be able to see the top of the tree, but I do have these other cameras recording. So if you've got this tree and you're flying towards it, I'm pressing up on the joystick right now and it will fully stop when it senses that obstacle and it will not let you pass by it, which is kind of annoying in some circumstances, but can also be absolutely fantastic depending on others. And then lastly, here in the settings, one final thing that I'd like to mention that this drone has that other drones don't have, and that is in your advanced safety settings. And within advanced safety settings, all the way at the bottom, this does now have air sense. And when you see that at first, you may be thinking, oh gosh, 
now the government is gonna fully track me and all that stuff. And yeah, it's understandable if you are concerned about that, but me personally, this setting alone is absolutely fantastic because what it does is when you enable AirSense, it will fully notify you if there is any other aircraft in the area. So I recently, back in January of this year, came into near contact with a helicopter that was flying very close to a mountain that they shouldn't have been flying that close to. Now, it was a police helicopter, so maybe they have different rules there, but just for them flying that close, it was very odd, and because of the scenario that I was in, my back was faced to it. I didn't know that it was there until it literally was out to my peripheral vision and I saw it. So that's when I was able to take action and land my drone. But if I had this air sense enabled then, I would have known. My app would have notified me that that helicopter was coming and I would have known probably 30 seconds to a minute before it actually came even close to being near my drone. So that's something that I really wish all drones would have. but. The Mavic Air is one of the first that I've ever owned that has introduced that feature. And I believe it's one of a few that have it in the entire DJI lineup. So if you are someone who wants that type of feature, then it is in this Mavic Air 2. Taking a look here at the autonomous flight modes that this thing has, you can go down to quick shots and it has numerous different quick shot types. It's got Droney, Rocket, Circle, Helix, Boomerang and Asteroid. Also down below that is the hyperlapse modes. And through this, you've got a free mode, you've got a circle mode, a course lock mode, as well as a waypoint mode. So you've got pretty much all that covered for the different types of hyperlapses that you would like to take. And if you've never heard of a hyperlapse before, quick rundown is it's basically just like a time lapse, but from a drone and it's faster than that. And then lastly, something that is pretty cool that this has that you may not know it has if you don't know it's there, is tracking your subjects. So if you draw a box around your subject, skip through the tutorial, click close, and you just walk around. I am not moving my controller sticks at all right now, but it is completely tracking me and moving with me. So this is just set to the eye mode. So this will not go and move the drone itself, but it will follow me around and see where I'm going. So as you can see, there's a lot of different contrast here. So that does improve the quality of how well this performs, but the auto track can work even in scenarios where there is less contrast, but it's not as likely that it will go and perform as well. The other modes, you've got point of interest. You can go and turn this on and it will start spinning around you. Now this is different than circle mode in your quick shots in that it will go and track your subject. So if your subject moves around, it will continue circling around your moving subject, which is pretty cool. And as you can see, I'm not doing this at all. This is completely autonomously doing this, which is pretty dang awesome. It's got some super smooth moves too. So that is something that I really like. Um, as far as changing the distance out, you just pull back on your stick and it will go and move the distance back. As my drone returns with a low battery RTH, something final to mention about the Mavic Air 2 is that it does have smart RTH. And how that works, it's not entirely clear to me, but it is apparently called smart RTH, so it is apparently smarter than other versions of RTH in past drones. The interesting thing that I wanna know is how accurate it is in comparison to where I took off from. So. I'm going to let this fully land for itself and see how accurate it is. Not moving it around at all. That's pretty crazy. That is about almost exactly where I had left this to take off from. If I go back to an earlier clip of before I had taken off, as you can see, it is pretty accurate where it is. So that's pretty awesome that DJI has the smarts there in the drone. So there you have it. There is my first flight of the Mavic Air 2. Talking more specifically about the build quality of this, I have to say the plastics on this are very, very strong as well as the battery has these new forms of clips on it. It's got metal clips, whereas previous drones have had the plastic clips. So in that case, it snaps in and you've got a much more reassuring clip into the drone and it feels a lot nicer taking it in and out just because those are metal. So I love that it has that welcomed addition there. 
Also, it has a much better gimbal than you would expect. Only downside with this gimbal is something that they absolutely need to fix in software because the Mavic Mini has it, and that is adjusting the gimbal speed. The gimbal speed is not changeable within the settings at this current moment, which is very, very odd, but it's probably just one of those things that they will roll out in a future firmware update as well as an app update. So I hope that that's coming soon. As far as everything else on this drone goes, the propellers, they're pretty sturdy as well. The motors, very quiet. And then the controller, this thing is pretty great. I really like the changes that they made with this controller. Although it is larger and maybe a little bit more difficult to just slip in a pocket, it is really sturdy and feels very nice in comparison to older DJI drones. The controls are super responsive and they snap into place very quickly, so that's a huge plus. And the joysticks being completely metal is great to have. So I really appreciate the changes that they made with this. I like having my phone here at the top. I guess for some people it may not be as ideal if you're somebody who flies with an iPad mini or an iPad then you may be looking at this and thinking, hmm, can I get an iPad in there? Can I even use an iPad? And I'd have to say right now, it's probably not super possible to fit an iPad in there. So in that case, you're gonna have to wait until an adapter comes out for this for an iPad, which I'm sure, I'm very sure will come out quite soon. So don't worry about that. This controller is pretty much sitting in a sweet spot as far as how many buttons are on this. It's got just enough, not too many. So you are set there. My biggest gripe about this entire design of the Mavic Air 2 has to do with this gimbal protector. DJI is constantly trying to make their gimbal protectors work better than the past ones, and just every time there's something different about the next one that the last one did better, but the new one does other things better, and it's just, it's, I wish that they could just find something that works really well. In this case, they integrated everything into one piece. So in older Mavic drones, they would have it where there would be a separate gimbal piece that would hold the gimbal in place, and then there would be a full-on protector that this outer piece would go and protect. So in this case, putting it on, all you gotta do is grab your drone, you put on the top part first, go down to the bottom, and press it in. But you may not be able to see right now, this camera is constantly moving. It does not lock into place like the Mavic Mini does, so it's pretty annoying to get this protector on, but it's still possible, and then you just snap it in and you're set. So it is kind of annoying how much this gimbal moves around while you're trying to put it into this gimbal protector, but otherwise it is kind of nice having it all in one. So overall, this drone has done so much for only $799, which again, I understand that's a lot of money and it's not the cheapest drone, but for that price, this outperforms the Mavic Pro 2 in so many different categories that it's kind of crazy that they're able to get this priced down so low. I hope that they integrate some future software improvements, which it's DJI, they more than likely will. So if you're planning on purchasing this now, I would say go for it. And if you're looking for a pro level drone, this is it. This can fit in a bag, this can go and go with you pretty much anywhere and it performs very well. In conclusion, if you are looking to purchase this drone after all this yourself, I highly recommend it, then definitely make sure to purchase using the links down below in the description. Those are affiliate links, so that means it helps support me and this channel and everything I do here at no additional cost to you. So if you wanna help support me, make sure to use those down below. Also, make sure to leave your suggestions for videos that you want to see down in the comments below because I barely touched the surface with a lot of the features that this has in this video because if I touched everything, it would just be far too long. So if you wanna see future videos about this, make sure to let me know what you wanna see down in the comments below. Also, let me know if you liked this video by giving it a thumbs up as well as subscribing for those future videos. My last video should be up there and my Mavic Mini review should be down there. But that being said, that's it for this video. Hope to see you in the next one. Peace.